Hello, my name is Miss Nana Addo and I'm a business teacher here at Harris Academy Beckenham. So why should you choose GCSE Business Studies? Would you like to know and understand business concepts and the impact of business on individuals and society? Would you like to apply knowledge and understanding to business issues? Would you like to investigate and analyze real business opportunities? And would you like to develop as enterprising individuals? Well, look no further because business is definitely the right choice for you. You will be given the opportunity to study business from the first idea of setting up a business to the successful operation of a firm. You might have an interest in business and want to own your own business one day, but not all students have to. You should have an inquiring mind and be interested in learning about the world around you, how businesses are set up, and what it is that makes someone a great entrepreneur. So what will you learn in business studies? Well, there are six components that you will learn across two years. The first is 3.1, business in the real world. Here, we look at the purpose of business, reasons for starting a business, basic functions and types of businesses, um, also aims and objectives as well as stakeholders. 3.2 is where we look at influences on business. So here we look at the acronym PESTL, and we look at the political, economical, social, technological, legal, and environmental factors that might influence a business. Number three is business operations. Here we look at the production process and how to make it more efficient. 3.4, we look at human resources. This is all to do with labor. So we will look at ideas of recruitment, training, as well as motivation. 3.5, we look at marketing. And here we look at the marketing mix. So price, place, promotion, and product. And last but not least, we look at finance. So finance includes ideas of cash flow, financial calculations, as well as analyzing financial performance. How will I be assessed? So this is how students are assessed in business. They will be assessed through two exams, paper one and paper two. Paper one is the title is Influences of Operations and HRN, Human Resource Management on Business Activity. And this is a written exam, an hour and 45 minutes, 90 marks. And this makes up 50% of their GCSE. The other paper is paper two, which is influences of marketing and finance on business activity. Again, a written exam, an hour and 45 minutes and 90 marks. And this makes the other 50% of their GCSE. There will be no coursework for them to do in GCSE business studies. Over the course of two years, you will grow as a student and you will show all of these skills that are not only helpful for business, but can be transferable to other subjects as well as your futures. The first quality is solving business problems. So every student is able to solve problems by using the knowledge that they have. Number two is a critical and reflective thinker. This means not just agreeing with everything that you see, especially even sometimes on the news, but questioning if something is right based on business knowledge. Number three is an inquiring mind. Similarly, it's the ability to ask questions. Why does something happen? Is it only in one circumstance that something happens? Is it only in a particular country that something happens? Number four is strong quantitative and qualitative skills. So you would definitely develop the skill as you do more calculations, but as well as your long extended pieces of writing, you will reveal or you will develop your qualitative skills. Number five is strong presentation skills. So throughout business, you will do presentations. Your first one, you probably will be extremely shy, but you do not have to worry. We will equip you with the necessary skills for you to be a confident speaker. Number six is, is making informed judgments. 
So this is based on evidence, this is based on knowledge, this is based on analysis. And this all results into the last thing, which is confidence. All of our business students grow in confidence. So where does business actually lead you to? So number one, there are several several different academic and vocational qualifications that you might take at level three. So this includes A-levels in business, maybe history, geography, economics, and even psychology. As well as this, we have our vocational qualifications that are known as Cambridge Technicals Level 3 in Business that we offer here at Harris Academy Beckenham Sixth Form. In terms of um, skills gained from the GCSE, you can use your skills to support entry into employment or other training in specific aspects of business, such as an apprenticeship and vocational qualifications, which focus on more specialized business areas. And last but not least, when we talk about employment, you might progress to careers in banking, marketing, HR, sales, product management, and general management. These are only a few. There are many other jobs that you also might look into. So this is where business can take you. Fact or fiction. So on the board, we have three different statements and three different reasons that sometimes students believe that can actually cause them not to take business studies. So let's actually see if there's any truth to them. So number one, you can only choose business studies if you want to have your own business in the future. So yes, some students who take business do wish to own their own business, but a large majority don't. They are just simply interested in business. Business is about understanding how various businesses work and applying your knowledge to various business contexts. So even if you do not have want to have a business, remember that you will always be a part of the business world somehow. Perhaps you will be, you will be an employee, but you also may be an employer. So all the information that we teach you is useful for life. Number two, business is just about making profits. This is untrue. Profit is one of the many business objectives that a business may have. But when we look at businesses, for example, in the public sector, they do not have this objective. Their objective is to provide a good or service for the general public. And so profit is just a small fraction of what we learn. So there's so much more to learn. Last but not least, I hate math. I can't study business. Quantitative skills are helpful, but they are only a small fraction of the whole course. So when we go on to finance, there are calculations involved, but your teachers will teach you all the equations you need to know. And remember, finance is only one unit out of six, but math is involved in the course. But even if you do not feel like you're going to get a level nine, a level eight in GCSE math, you can still take business. This session would not be complete without reviewing some business news. So this was news that was posted on BBC Business News on Monday the 15th of March. So it says interest in esports will only grow and grow. So this was a headline. And you might ask yourself, how does this relate to business? Well, when we look at esports, we can consider technological developments that have made or has made esports very popular. We can also ask questions such as why is there a demand in esports? What are the trends that have encouraged the growth of esports? We know that the pandemic has resulted in many people staying at home. And so this has encouraged that growth in esports. So there are various business subjects that relate to the idea of esports. The first and the largest one being technological development. So here is our second headline. Hundreds disappointed by Mother's Day BKs. You might ask yourself, how does this relate to business? 
Well, this links in with a topic called operations and managing stock using a method, for example, called just-in-time. This can also relate to ideas of good customer service and the dangers of dissatisfied customers. So hopefully you can see just from these two headlines that almost all news can relate to business somehow. Hello, my name is Miss Nana Addo and I'm a business teacher here at Harris Academy Beckenham. So why should you choose GCSE Business Studies? I would like you to consider some reasons why you think that this business idea didn't work. So from the image, we can see a man who is holding an umbrella. And the idea is that the umbrella collects, collects water and it empties it into a sort of container that he holds around his shoulder. So it's kind of like a plastic bag that we see. The water fills up in this plastic container. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to think about why do you think that this business idea didn't work? So again, I want you to think about why you think this business idea didn't work. So we have butter, but this time it's in a pritzit. It looks as if they are using that pretty thick butter form to butter their bread or perhaps it could be toast. Why do you think that this business idea was unsuccessful? And last but not least, we have this sweater or this hoodie. And it's called the Extra Love Sweetheart Sweet Shirt, and it's $79. Why do you think this business idea didn't work? So why do we set up businesses, or why do entrepreneurs set up businesses? So... First of all, let's actually think about what the word entrepreneur means. An entrepreneur is anyone who sets up a business but also assumes the risk of the business. So remember, there is a risk that a business might fail and that might have some costs or consequences that the entrepreneur would have to face. So every time I say entrepreneur, I just mean somebody who sets up a business but also takes on, fully takes on the risk involved in setting up a business. So we set up businesses to satisfy the needs or wants of a customer. This is why everyone sets up a business. They want to satisfy the needs or the wants of a customer. It doesn't mean it doesn't matter if you're setting it up to make profit. It doesn't matter if you're setting up your business to um, provide a good or service to the general public. We are trying to satisfy the needs or wants of a customer. Now let's look at the difference between needs and wants. So needs are those goods and services that we have to consume if we are to live. So these include food, shelter, and warmth. Sometimes students like to add something like a smartphone, but we don't really need our smartphone to live. Now, a want is something that we like to consume, but we don't need it in order to survive. So we like to have these goods and services, but we don't need it in order to survive. These include holidays, our smartphone, entertainment, and other luxuries that we may like but do not need. So in order to satisfy your customers, a business needs to accurately identify its customers' needs and wants. What needs or wants do these businesses satisfy? 
So on the left, we have TikTok, which I'm, which I think we're all very familiar with. And on the right, we have a good, which is the Apple AirPods. What needs or wants do these businesses satisfy? When we look at TikTok, it's a social media platform. And so it satisfies our desire to be entertained and to be connected. So we want to be entertained. We want to be connected with other people from across the world. But also, we our attention spans are quite short. We don't want to watch videos that are two hours, three hours long. You know, sometimes you might even find YouTube videos that are 45 minutes long. We want something that is short and snappy. And so that's why they have a duration from 15 seconds to one minute. So this satisfies our wanting, us wanting to be connected, us wanting to be entertained, but us wanting all of that very quickly, um, a fast food entertainment, essentially. And then we have the AirPods. If you've ever had um, the normal Apple earphones or headphones, earphones even, you would remember that the wires easily got tangled. You know, sometimes they would catch onto the door. Sometimes we would run and it would, it would maybe perhaps catch onto something else. It, it could get caught in our, in our clothes. And so we have a desire and a want to go wireless. And this is why the AirPods work so well. This is Student Help PLC. It's not a real business. I've just made it up. And they have realized that their customers have a particular want. And this want is to complete homework in half the time that they currently do. So how would I solve this problem as an entrepreneur? So I would perhaps create an app that allows students to take a picture of their working out, let's say for math, and upload their working out to see if they've got their answer wrong. What the app wouldn't do was provide the answer straight away, but it would mark where they have errors in their working out. And then they will be able to know where to look at to correct in order to complete their homework. What do you think about my idea? Do you think that it meets the customer's wants? I think it does. But do you think it does so in a way that is efficient? You know, if students can only find out what they've got wrong and not what they've got right, is this the best app that there could be? So this is an example of how decide what products they're going to put out. They first begin with what customers want. So now it's your turn to be an entrepreneur. You have one minute to produce a business idea that meets the following customer wants. So that's completing homework in half the time. So I'm pretty sure that this is something that students across all of England would love to do, and that's completing the homework in half the time they currently complete their homework. So you will need to think of a brief explanation of your idea in less than 30 words. And I would actually encourage you to share your idea with someone at home so they can give you a rating out of 10 on whether it meets the customer's needs or so even a want, whether it meets the customer's want.
And all that's left to say is thank you for joining me and for um, experiencing a small part of our business taster lesson on why we set up businesses. I hope you've understood that, number one, the reason why we set up businesses is to meet customers' needs as well as their wants. The difference between needs and wants, remember, a need is something that we must have in order to survive and uh, want is something that we would like, but it's not necessary for our survival. And last but not least, looking at examples of needs and wants that businesses such as TikTok and Apple with their AirPods, what needs and wants they have met. I hope you've had a fantastic session and I look forward to seeing you in business in September.